we wake up this morning to a war in Europe. Very few expected that Ukraine would offer such fierce, strong resistance during the full-scale Russian invasion. We were predicted to be defeated in just a few days, and such predictions could have had every chance to turn right. We want to tell you about the little-known events in the defense of Kyiv, when it seemed that everything was about to end not in favor of Ukraine. In this video, you will see carefully collected footage from the first weeks of the Great War, evidencing that Ukrainians have been fighting for freedom in a heroic way. In February, Putin wanted to crush Ukraine's defenses by attacking from all sides. The Soviet invasion of Czechoslovakia in 1968, also known as Operation Danube, had apparently had been taken as model. The only difference was the fewer personnel involved, which the Kremlin strategists decided to compensate for with a tried and tested huge distance march throws and deployed aviation. In February 24th at 8 am, about 40 Russian helicopters with elite special forces on board took off from Belarus in the direction of Kyiv. Their goal was to capture the airport in Hostomel, also known as Antonov Airport. This is a huge cargo airport with a long runway, located just 10 kilometers from Kyiv. There, the Russians planned to airlift numerous infantry troops and military equipment. They recently refined this scheme in successful swift combats in Kazakhstan, where 150 Il-76 aircraft simultaneously delivered special forces for the landing. A few hours after the air assault at the Hostomel airport, the Russians were supposed to capture the administrative buildings of Kyiv and decaptivate the government of Ukraine. However, the problems came crashing down on the Russians immediately after their helicopters, having crossed the border, were massively yes! shut down. Yes! <laughs> At their destination, they also encountered fierce resistance. The National Guardsmen who sent an out the airport were not taken aback with dozens of helicopters and growing numbers came down on them from the sky. Instead, they swiftly fanned out on the airfield and used the deadly force. They were fighters of an understaffed small garrison of National Guard of Ukraine, armed only with small arms and mortars. For more than three hours, the Russian had been trying to knock out the National Guardsmen by firing from helicopters. One, two, three, four, five, six. Local residents later said that the airport was also shot with airstrikes. It was a tough battle. The helicopters massively bombarded the shelter of our defenders from the air, and later, after the paratroopers landed, the fire got intensified from the ground as well. As the fighters later reported, several Russian helicopters, unable to withstand the hell of bullets, fell down directly on the airport. After several hours of intense fighting, the officers of the National Guard decided to retreat, destroying the airstrip with mortars. The Russians had not expected resistance at all, not to mention that the fighting would take so long. All this time, 18 Russian Il-76 aircraft filled to the brim with soldiers and equipment were circling over Belarus waiting for an airborne landing. The main directorate of intelligence of the Minister of Defense of Ukraine figured out that Kremlin's plans and were swifting in Russian three helicopters with elite fighters armed with man pads to Hostomel. Their objective was to delay the disembarkation of the paratroopers and an even bolder objective to shoot down at least one aircraft Il-76 to disrupt the airborne landing of the Russians. Little is known about the operation of the Ukrainian special forces. Having arrived at the spot, the defenders found that the enemy had already started building fortifications and observation posts. Almost immediately a long firefight set in, resulting in several of our soldiers being wounded. But the special forces managed to buy time due to which the airborne landing of the Russians was cancelled. Then the events unfolded very quickly. Right before the morning, the regular army of the Ukrainian armed forces knocked the enemy out of the airport. The next day, February 25th, 
the Russians launched a second assault with 100 helicopters. They are Russian airborne forces. The airport changed hands several times. On the night of the 26th, the armed forces shot down two Russian Il-76 heading towards the airport. In the end, as a result of intense battles, the airstrip was destroyed. The plans for a rapid capture of Kyiv through the quick access from Hostomol airport were completely foiled. But Putin didn't give up in capturing the Ukrainian capital. A few hours before the Russian invasion, the author of this video, while in Kharkiv, was watching with horror on the Google service a 12 km traffic jam from tanks on the border with the Kharkiv region in Belgorod. Social networks supplemented the picture with the video materials. Meanwhile, a column of 8 km lined up on the border with the Kherson region. After the failure in the Hostomel operation, Putin threw 65 km of equipment at Kyiv. These are such times when the enemy's strength is to be estimated in kilometers. Russia sent not just the most numerous but also the most capable forces to the Kyiv offensive. Paratroopers, special forces, Russian guards, attack tanks, units, the most trained, the most armed on military hardware stuff with the modern French electronics. This avalanche of steel was supposed to crush Kyiv. The main troops of the armed forces of Ukraine were the front line in Donbass, and their transfer could take weeks. It seemed that the Ukrainian capital was doomed, but our military was not going to give up. No one can name with a certainty the exact single reason why the giant Russian convoy halted its advance for a whole month. Military experts cite dozens of reasons, including the enemy's failures in logistics, poor terrain knowledge, excessive fuel consumption, and even cheap tires. But all analysts agree that this would be impossible without the ongoing resistance of the Ukrainian fighters. The one who managed to physically hold the giant column was a small special force unit known as Aerial Reconnaissance, under the command of the Colonel Yaroslav Honchar. It was a group of 30 IT engineers who were riding ATVs, quad bikes, moved quickly through the swampy terrain and outrun the Russians. Deploying drones, they tracked the movement of enemy equipment and ambushed them. Firstly, they halted the convoy by laying mines along its path and blowing up the first three armored vehicles in the narrowest part of the road. Here, the enemy's cheap tires played their role. When trying to bypass the broken equipment, the enemy bogged down even deeper. No, the halted convoy became a very convenient target for attacks. The drone operators of this military forest unit launched powerful in-house developed octocopters to drop bombs on the Russians. IT arsonists are now very well known and often delight us with their videos, but at that time it was an absolute innovation. The Russians later broke up the convoy into smaller units to try to advance for an offensive towards the Ukrainian capital, but the same forced unit successfully attacked the convoy's supply depot, depriving the Russians of fuel. The important point to be aware of is that the Russian equipment was to move in more than one direction. They were supposed to drive back after delivering ammunition, to pick up the wounded and any battered weapon or damaged equipment. All this brought about even more confusion and slowed down the enemy. Thanks to the time gained, the armed forces of Ukraine blew up the bridges, which slowed down the Russians even further. Because in order to overcome the water obstacles, they had to bring water pontoons by passing the column that got stuck. The enemy's position was complicated with the explosion of the dam at the entrance of Tudemidiv. The vanguard of the Russians literally got bogged down in the mud and left their equipment behind. Later, the residents of the flooded village told reporters that they'd rather let their houses flooded than let the Moscowites in. Further events are well known. The attack forces of the Russians were broke into Kyiv region, set real terror among the local residents. 
Before they gained a foothold in the captured lands, they began to rob, rape and mass execute people. Ставили на коліна до стіни, постріл в голову і все. World has not yet seen Russian soldiers shooting two civilians in the back. Kinder, nicht schießen. They were noted for their phenomenal brutality. But the Russians cut off from supplies could not advance further towards Kyiv. At some point their group was being encircled by the gathered reserves of the armed forces of Ukraine, the National Guard and the Territorial Defense Battalions. The aggressors' armed forces had only two options left, to die or to withdraw running away. They chose the latter and they called it a goodwill step. It was a complete route. No one should have any illusions. If the Russians had succeeded, the fate of Bucha, Borodyanka, Irpin and other affected settlements would have been the same for all of Kyiv. This is what they were preparing for. But the horde of heavily armed assassins was halted by the fierce resistance of our soldiers. The success of the armed forces of Ukraine has accounted for not to the weakness of the inferiority of the Russian armed forces, but to the ingenuity and tenacity of our military. Putin's plans to take over Ukraine were quite realistic and he hasn't given up on them so far. But the Russian army is really dangerous. It is terrible, destructive force. Yes, it is corrupt, but the Russians have been preparing for this major war for decades, including the days of the USSR. Yes, they have failures in logistics, but they compensated that by creating narrow sections of the front line. The dangerous feature of the Russian army to adapt to difficult conditions was noted by military experts from the outset. And the notorious tendency of the orcs' military leadership to ignore casualties and losses and to act with explicit terrorist methods makes them even more dangerous. <laughs> Ukraine faced an enemy that has a tenfold advantage in many aspects. This is the battle of David and Goliath. The fact that our military has halted such a force is a real feat at the level of ancient legendary heroes. The only fact is, our heroes are quite real. The Air Force of Ukraine, our ace pilots, has not allowed the enemy to dominate the air despite their absolute superiority. Our tankers didn't hesitate to go out solo against the whole columns of the enemy. And they won. Our artillerists have become a real terror for the Russians. These are them, our gods of war, have made the aggressors suffer the greatest and the heaviest losses. Well, our iron infantry. In our video released a month before the war, when the invasion was obvious, we said that Ukrainian infantry could stop any frontal tank attack. And more than 2,000 destroyed Russian tanks has evidenced the proof of that. That video is generally called prophetic because of all our predictions have turned right. Except for one, we said that the armed forces of Ukraine would do everything possible to defeat the enemy. Now they do everything possible and even impossible. To destroy enemy equipment from more than 5 kilometers with ATGMs, Красота. even helicopters, yes. easy. To mass destroy warships of the Black Sea Fleet with drones, <laughs> To sing the Russian flagship. To conduct destructive special operations in the deep rear of the enemy. 
to master the latest technology in a week, although the training course is set to take three, six months? They can do everything. On a 10-point scale, the Pentagon rated the actions of the armed forces of Ukraine at 12. They were shocked by the skills of our fighters. We have a long and difficult road ahead of us, but we will win. We must win, because light dispels darkness. <laughs>